Okay, so we start with the system. Uh, we've loaded already Lawrence 84 before, uh, according to instructions in the tutorial. And so here this is the system. We load it, and here in the starter window, we have the initial conditions that are currently set there. We want to start from some arbitrary point, so we select the initial point just as point, and we want to see the graphics, so we do a 2D plot. We need to set the axes correctly for the x and y coordinates and all the limits. Um, x and y, yes. And we can also do a 3D plot. Um, it's a 3D system, so we might as well do a 3D plot. And afterwards, we also have, when we follow the branch, we will have also one of the axes being these control parameters. Anyway, so we'll do a 3D plot, which is also on the window output graphic. Okay, 3D plot. Um, I want to have a grid, so I could put, turn the grid on. And then, uh, again, we need to pick the layout, since we want to have x, y, z, but in reasonable coordinates. Um, these values were just from a previous calculation. I mean, Matcon always remembers the previous calculations, even if you crit. So you have to pay attention to that, that you actually have some certain values. Anyway, so now we pick an arbitrary point as a starting point. Not an arbitrary, a point. It's just an initial condition, which is in the starter window. We integrate forward on the compute, and here it is. So it converts to some point, which is now an equilibrium point or a fixed point. And... Um, we can use that now to uh, continue. So we p declare this as an equilibrium point, and uh, <clears throat> when we do that, then we get in the window also parameters F, which we need to click because that's what we're going to use for the branch following. And um, so um, we have the initial point. So we, under the, we pick the last point from the previous simulations just to make sure. So we select that point, so here are the values the coordinates, and so now we see those values show up in the starter window, and um, just to make sure we pick an equilibrium point, and here we have uh, now also selected F to continue, and so we have now when we compute, ah, we also want to change the coordinates because we're going to plot now F as a parameter, and the same thing also in the 3D plot, um, so there we have F in the x-axis, uh, going from 0 to 2, say, or maybe 1, whatever, right? And so, same thing here, the axis for f uh, from 0 to 2. And then we can compute. Compute, and we compute forward. And uh, sure enough, there's a branch, and it stops in what they mark as LP, which they call limit point, which is the same thing as a fold point, which is the same thing as a saddle node bifurcation. Continuing finds another fold point, and then when you resume further, actually, the branch continues and it, fi it finds a half bifurcation. And we'll stop here. You could continue further, but uh, this is good enough for right now. And so let's just look at it in 3D. So we see that these LP points are indeed saddle node bifurcations. So you have to look in the right directions, right, in the right projection. If you look in the X and the YZ projection, one can't see that these are limit points. You have to look in um, one axis has to be the control parameter f, and so indeed in the fz plane you see that these are clearly limit points, and so <clears throat> very nice. So now what one can do is one can actually follow these limit points as parameters are changed. That's what we, we've done that in our in our code. We haven't done that. So we start the category is not type is limit point. For that we need two parameters to follow. One parameter be at a limit point and the other to be at a fixed point. And so we pick one of the limit points as an initial condition. We select that point. <coughs> and uh, we now plot also G instead of the coordinate. Okay. And G also between 0 and 2, say. And we do the same thing in the 3D plot. So over there, it complains that we still have to select two parameters for following, right? So we want to also select, select G. Good. And then we can compute. And so it computes now forward. And that line stops in a point CP, which is called the cusp point. And so you see, this is now a line of saddle node bifurcations in the FG parameter plane. 
or in the 3D plot, of course, you can also read off still the Z value for those things. Now, what happens at this cusp point? Well, let's look at the other limit point and start a branch from there. So we go back in the diagram, we can go to the previous uh, calculation. And there we see, okay, there's the other limit point. We select this as initial condition. And do again, well, we have to F and G, both selected and compute forward. And we see another branch, which happens to end in a zero half point, which we will ignore right now. That's not uh, of interest to us right now. We can also simulate backward. And you see the other branch also go to this cusp point. So as a matter of fact, this cusp point is a point where the two saddle node bifurcations annihilate each other. And um, so you have now a range of hysteresis where between the two lines you have three solutions and outside you have one solution each. Um, and the transitional curvy are saddle node bifurcations which annihilate at the cusp. 